you know, from a coach's perspective, um, it's been like this from the very, very first NCAA tournament ever that we've played in. You can just uh, wait. The leading up to the game is excruciating because all the things that run through your head about, um, you know, do we do we do a good job scouting these guys? Do we do a good job? We don't know enough about them, you know. La 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 la. We're going to take them like there's so many things that go through your head, and I don't care whether it's this year you're a three seed and you're undefeated in 1995 when we're getting ready to play Maine in the first round, you know, and you're scared to death that you know something something's going to happen. So uh, I'm thrilled that this one's out of the way and it's over with. Uh, obviously, these two and Aliyah were just magnificent, uh, and that's what you need. You know, we talked a lot about it before. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, yesterday, we said if uh, if Ash makes a couple threes tomorrow, if Nika makes a couple maybe, and um, then we're going to be fine. If those guys have trouble making shots, then it's going to be a long day for us. And obviously, you know, these two did what they're good at, and Aaliyah did what she's good at. And if we can keep that up, then we're going to be okay. Questions for the student athletes? Right here on the left, fourth row, Lori. Lori Riley, Hartford Current. Um, Ashlyn, can you just talk a little bit about playing in your first tournament game and was everything just going right for you tonight? Um, it was definitely really exciting. I had a lot of like nerves and like this anxious feeling before the game, like when I went to bed, when I woke up. Um, but no, to step out on the court and going through the starting lineup to hear like how loud our crowd was. Like I just felt like, like it was a dream. Like it was such a surreal moment uh, to be out there, and it was just really exciting. Question up front from Pat. Paige, can you just talk about winning this game on your coach's birthday? I assume that was a big emphasis for you guys not to let one go on, on on his birthday, and and what it means and what he means to you guys. Yeah, I'm. It's a lot better feeling when you win it, um, especially on. A special day for him. We wanted to be a special day. Um, I know if we lost, it would no longer be a special day. So to get this win, um, especially on his day, um, was really huge. But to continue to keep keep advancing in the tournament, um, and coach is everything for all of us. Um, he's like our grandpa. <laughs> but uh, no, nah, it's just I've learned so much under him. We've all learned so much under him. But it's not just stuff on the basketball court, it's stuff as human beings. Um, we know he has our back, even though some days it might not feel like it. Um, but he'll have our back for anything, anything we need in life. He'll always be there. Um, and it's just a real, mo uh, sometimes it's like tough love relationship, especially with me. Um, but just, I cherish our relationship so much. And I know I can count on him for whenever, just whenever I want to go chat, go to his office, um, just, literally talk about nothing and it'll be a great time um but we're super grateful to everyone who commit commits here comes to play for him so super grateful and happy birthday grandpa <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to griffin fourth row on the left griffin della penna newhouse sports at syracuse page what was it like for you to be back on the floor in this march madness setting super exciting um along with what Ash was saying, just a lot of like nerves, a lot of like anxious, ready to go. Um, we haven't played for about two weeks, so just ready to get the games rolling um, and definitely during the most important part of the season. Um, just excited to be back out there on the court with my teammates. Second row on the right, Emily. Emily Adams, Hartford Current. Um, Ashlyn, you know, when you had that first steal and score in the and one, we saw the reaction from you and from the team. I mean, just what was that moment like? And when did you feel like you really sort of settled into to this game today? Um, definitely after that play, I felt like I was settled in. Um, I was just going to let the game come to me. Like, I wasn't going to, like, overthink it, um, which I typically do sometimes. But um, no, today, I was like, after that play, I felt like I was finally ready to go. Um, it was just, like, exciting to just uh, to score on like that, like that being like my first bucket of the game, uh, really gets you involved. So it was exciting. Third row on the right, Maggie. 
Maggie Benoni, CT Insider. I'm Paige Carr on that same note. What was it like to see Ashlyn just so much rise up, especially in that third quarter in her first tournament game? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, it's what she and the other freshmen have been doing the entire season. So to come out in a huge stakes game, March Madness game, um, where it's win or go home and perform like that on your first time on the stage is, is really huge, especially getting confidence in, w in what you want to continue to do the rest of the way. Um, so her being aggressive, we need it. Um, her looking for a shot, we need it. Um, so for her to do it and, and come out with as much confidence as she did tonight was huge. We'll go to, on the left front row, Vicky. Vicki Fulkerson from the New London Day. Ashlyn, you talked about this a little coming into the tournament, I think yesterday maybe. What was uh, 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 March Madness like growing up in Indiana? Like what, what is this tournament like to you? Like Paige has talked about like watching it since she was a little kid. Like I'm sure you did also. Oh yeah, it's huge in Indiana. Um, since we're such like a basketball state, um, especially like how like my family embraces it so much. Like I've grown up watching March Madness since like I was little. Um, it's like a big deal in my family. Like we are super competitive with it. Um, like making brackets and everything. Like this year's a little different because like I'm actually here now. Um, but no, it's just like it's so surreal to actually finally be a part of it just because you watch it on TV for so long and you watch games like all day long. Um, but to actually be playing in a March Madness game is super cool. We'll go fourth row on the right. Natalie Hebron with the next. Um, to address the elephant in the room, can you just talk about the shirts you're wearing? Um, like, <laughs> who designed those? Did you get to pick the picture on the shirt you're wearing? Um, just tell me as much as you can about those shirts. Yeah, so my shirt, we were headed up to Big East Media Day, and my man needed a nap, so he just <laughs> he kind of took a snooze, and I took a flick, so we all picked them. Um, Ash, you can go ahead and explain yours. Um, I think this shirt sums up Coach's relationship with me. This is what he looks like most of the time <laughs> um, on the court, um, but when he yells at me, I'm just starting to translate it into I love you instead of you suck. Um, but so when he goes, you suck, I'm just like, oh, love you too. You need a new translator. <laughs> Any other questions? We're going to go to Zoom. We have a question from Brad on Zoom. Brad, go ahead. Maybe not. Sorry, Brad. Brad, you there? Yes, ladies. How are you? And congratulations on the uh, win. That offensive spark in the first quarter when you went on the 17 to 0 run. After that, what was your mindset and how that would play out for the rest of the game? I think after that run, we just wanted to continue to keep our foot on the gas, don't let up. Um, we also know basketball is a game of runs, so staying like present in that we want to continue to keep going on this run and not let Jackson State go on a run. Um, but we know that every single game during this time, everybody's playing for their lives, so nobody's going to give up. Nobody's going to just ease off the throttle. So just continue to play our game um, and continue to do what got us on that run um, and just staying focused and staying in a moment. We have time for one more here. No more questions, ladies. Thank you very much. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for Coach. Wow. Pat, up front. You know, you talked a little bit about it in your opening statement, but to have this team get off on that kind of a run, and then to have Ashlyn get her start the way, the way she did. How important was it for you guys to, to make a statement early in this one and just to get the confidence of this team up early? Yeah, <clears throat> if, um, if you remember the, um, wasn't that long ago, obviously the Providence game, at the first game of the Big East tournament, it's, it, it, it takes a little bit of time to get your, get yourself acclimated into the game. 
and sometimes the the other team um, is is going to is going to react to whatever's going on. So if you're struggling, and they get a little bit confident and they feel really good about how they can attack you and how they can guard you. Um, it has, a, it has a way of impacting the game. But when you start off the way we did, um, and Paige, when, <clears throat> when she starts off like that, it makes everybody feel a lot more confident. Um, they can breathe a little bit easier, uh, knowing that um, she's pretty much taken control of the game. And, and Aaliyah, you know, we, we weren't sure like, how she's going to react with the mask back on. Um, and whether or not she's going to be able to feel comfortable with all the contact that was going to happen. And when I saw, you know, how, how physical she was rebounding the ball and, and outside of her area, uh, uh, that's when I knew we were okay. Paige was being aggressive. Aaliyah was being, you know, assertive. And um, I thought we're going to be okay because those two things are – are, are kind of what drives us. And, and we always need one more player to step up. And if it's a couple players, then it's obviously a big, big, big win for us. But, you know, Ash, this is what she does. She, she scores points. And she's comfortable doing it. And I was really worried because, you know, her and KK, you know, they um, – <clears throat> I think they put a lot of pressure on themselves to be really, really good. And I was hoping that it, it wouldn't backfire on them. But, you know, that was huge, you know, the two of them playing like that. Questions for Coach? Emily, second row. Do you know, I mean, with Paige, just seeing her back on the floor in the tournament, did you expect her to kind of make the statement that she did today with her first postseason double-double, all of that, and just kind of what was it like to, to see her back in form? Um, I pulled her aside yesterday. We talked a little bit. And um, I said, um, I need to talk to you. And she said, OK. I said, what do you think I'm going to talk to you about? She said um, that I have to take over the tournament that I have to do what I did in the Big East tournament, and I have to make sure that I'm everything that my team needs me to be. So she kind of said it for me, you know, and, and that's when I knew that um, it, means, it, it means a lot to her because being in, a, being in the tournament, coming off an injury, and then being in the tournament, missing a whole year, those are her last two tournament experiences. And I know that this was a big, big deal for her. Because, you know, she's a forgotten, she's a forgotten entity in the country, you know? And I think maybe she reminded everybody that she's still pretty good. And, you know, the, the, the thing that needs to be said, too, is um, playing a team like Jackson State, they, they compete really, 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 really hard. And they seem to get energized even more. The more you score, the more they want to keep playing. And they never feel like we're out of it and we should just pack it in. And I was really impressed with them. I think they're exceptionally well coached and, and they're big kid. You know, we didn't know, like, okay, well, you know, maybe she'll. She, I told her after the game, too, man, she played fantastic. She had a great game. Yeah, they were good. And we had to play good. And we had to shoot a great. If we don't shoot a great, okay, that's your scoop. Going into Monday, if we don't shoot a great, we're gonna have a hard time winning. We'll go to Vicky, front row on the left. Do you know, um, 
for Ashlyn to have that good of a game in her first NCAA tournament game, that and then like the way she was in here, like this is the most confident that she's been all year. Maybe is that a really great game for her? Yeah, yeah, her confidence is uh, is back. She lost it for a while, but it's um, it's come back. Um, and and I, I've always said uh, when you're a really good player, and you're a really good shooter. You you have to be more like Paige. You have to be slightly delusional and think that you'll never miss a shot. And if you do miss it, it's the gods are conspiring against you. It's not your fault, and you shouldn't ever get down on it. And um, and maybe some of that's wearing off on on Ash, but. Um, she certainly didn't play like a freshman today. And she actually played better today than she has at any practice this, this week leading up to the game. So figure that one out. Questions for Coach? Right here on the right. Wilson Jackson, HBCU Game Day. Coach, um, you talked about in this press conference about the need for you guys to make shots. And so after the, you, you get a win like this, uh, what was your message to, to Coach Reed after the game, especially with the way that women's college basketball is changing and the parity that's you know forming in between different programs? Yeah, I wanted to I wanted to commend her on her season. You know, going undefeated in your league. I don't care what league you play in. I don't care who you play against. You play you know 18 conference games and you win them all, and you win your conference tournament. Um, that's a hell of a job, and it's not like the first time, right? I mean, she's been doing this for quite some time now there, and a lot of these coaches that work like that and have tremendous success and put together put together great teams and have put together a terrific program, nobody knows about them. They certainly don't get on TV enough, and they certainly don't get enough recognition. Um, and I wanted to let her know that and that I wanted to um, I, I wanted to put myself out there and for her and I think we need coaches like her um, to be celebrated and um, bigger schools need to not keep recycling coaches that are let go by other Power Five schools, whatever you want to call them, that they should start looking outside the box a little bit because there's a lot of great coaches out there, and she's one of them. We have time for two more. We'll go to Zoom. Rob Knox, what's your question? Hey, Coach, how you doing? Happy birthday. Thank you. Um, in, 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 line, in, in line with that question, I'm going to ask you the same thing. But one of the things, I, I, I'll write for the next, and I'll cover the MIAC and SWAC um, this year. And one of the things, obviously, you played your share of all uh, MIAC and SWAC schools over the years. And lately, um, the, those programs have started to rise, as you mentioned. Uh, but there's always still that, that lack of respect um, for those conferences and their schedules and different things. In your opinion, what can be done to maybe help elevate elevate um, you know, getting gaining respect more from maybe the committee with, the, with in regards to seating and or just um, opportunities? Um, yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, I, I, I do think they suffer from the same thing that a lot of mid-major schools suffer, getting people that are, that are at, a, at, a, at a high level, getting them to want to play you. It's really, really hard to put, put together a schedule when you're in their situation because everybody just wants you to come to their place and they'll pay you some money to come there, but they'll never come to your place and play. And that's really difficult to, to get your net, whatever the hell they're using today, to get yourself to that point. And then the teams in your league are suffering the same situation that you're in. So they always play on the road against the best teams, probably lose. And then the reputation is, well, they're good in their league, but they don't compete nationally. And yet I think you know, Jackson State and some of the other programs have proven that they can go on the road and compete 
maybe not win, but they certainly can compete. And I think getting a 14 seed, when I remember when we were a number one seed, a lot of times we played schools from that, from, from that league as a 16. So I think being a 14, maybe there is some understanding of, hey, these guys deserve it a little more than a team that, you know, won't go out there and play anybody or a team that finishes with a losing record in their own conference, you know, uh, that gets a six seed or a seven seed. You know, so people get rewarded for being in the right conference. Just by being born a certain way, they get rewarded. And teams that are trying to really, really work really hard to build this competitive schedule don't get enough rewards. And, um, and maybe this is the start of it, 14. It's not great, but I wonder who, I wonder how they would have done if they didn't have to play us here in front of this environment against the kind of team that we have right now. Maybe next year we'll find out.